Welcome back to another wonderful Behind the Mask episode, episode dos for all you out there that do not speak Spanish, such as myself, episode number two. <laughs> number two. And number number two. two. I number one. I number two. And here we are. Again, I'm Eugene Lazos with my co host, Dennis the Menace Citron. Dennis. He is, hey, uh, hey, hey, hey. I haven't gone by that since I'll. <laughs> but we are back. We are back for another wonderful <laughs> episode of this little podcast that we call Behind the Mask. And yeah, it's been a. Uh, it's been a short time since the first episode. It's gonna first episode should already be up, and this one's gonna be going up not too long after. But the first one, we just kind of did an intro to who we are, what we've done, where we've been, and yeah, I mean that's kind of what I wanted to go with. Now we're coming in with actual paintball news on this one because just recently we saw that we had uh, the NXL. Paintball League, for those of you who don't know what it is. Yes. They had an event called the Lone Star Amateur Open. And that was literally just this weekend. So if you're hearing this, you guys probably already know about it. And we're a little behind. But bear with us. Because we'll be starting to catch up with everything that's going on very quickly. So this was held in Texas at the... Yeah, just outside of Dallas. Yeah. Although they are claiming Dallas on the the logo, if you I don't know if you noticed that. I did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess the the town that it was held at, where the paintball park was, is not I guess well known enough. That's how they did it with the Anaheim, or I should say, <laughs> the Los Angeles Anaheim Angels. Come on, claim your oh, state, oh, claim your city. Oh. But this was held at where was it again? Uh, Giant Party Paintball Park, I think is what it was called. Yeah, Giant Party Paintball Park, which sounds like a, it's a lot of fun, just from the name alone. It does. <laughs> it does. I wish we had something along that line. Everything in California has to be so edgy, you know? Yeah, this, that's true. This one sounds like it's just fun. Just lots of fun. Um, <laughs> but of course, it's in Texas, so it has to be giant. Because, you know, everything in Texas is bigger. Everything is bigger. There we go. <laughs> bigger. Although, but, I will say, um, uh-huh. I don't know. I, I, for fear of putting my foot in my mouth, I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave the comments alone on that one. However, <laughs> I've been to Texas a couple of times. And I'll just leave it at that. So. <laughs> I, I have too. I've been to San Antonio. I've been to El Paso a couple of times, which... Uh, I, I'm not a fan Same. of Same. El Paso and uh, yeah, spending time out in El Paso was not a fun time for me. It was a work time for me, but whatever it is, what it is. Oh yeah. Been there, done that. Um, sounds like, and there's a lot of people actually moving to Texas. I know a lot of people that have moved to Texas. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not to go too far off a topic, but for anybody listening, who's, you know, in California, you know what the, you know what the economy is like here, you know what the housing prices are like here. And so, yeah, we're seeing a lot of, you know, exodus to Arizona, Texas, um, Idaho. So, yeah. Yeah, I noticed uh, I actually was watching uh, Hulu and they had a commercial for um, Idaho and talking about how great the economy is and all this other stuff. But I dig- we're digressing. There's no need to talk about the economy yeah. and all that. Yeah. That's not, that's not <laughs> that's the point of, yeah, that's not the point of this podcast. So. <laughs> exactly. So let's get away from that and let's talk about paintball. So this happened this weekend. It was just north of Texas at, like we said, uh, Giant Party Sports Paintball Park. It was an amateur division, which is something that me and Dennis were talking about because we didn't know exactly what, what is, you know, what is amateur level include because those of you out there that know paintball and have been in it for a while nxl has always been a pro league they've had some amateur you know amateur yeah. games and stuff like that but you know more about it because of the pros the pros that play x-ball right right so that was there was the x-ball format which we were you know we had a little bit of dabbling in we had a team that we fielded that was playing the x-ball format 
Um, but as Eugene said, NXL was always relegated to the actual pro teams, you know, Dynasty, Excessive, Impact, and so on. So, yeah, so the, it was a bit of a head, head scratcher as to what exactly they were quantifying amateur to be. Um, and it's interesting, I, I not to to override you, Eugene, but I was just looking at the, the brackets, the rankings from the Lone Star Open. And I'm actually seeing some teams on here that ring a bell. Um, uh, the team that took top place in Division Two, Cartel Kids, uh, they've been around for a while. I don't, I definitely recognize that name. Mm-hmm. Um, there was also uh, NRG Elite. Um, they were in there. Dead Rabbits was in there. Um, I'm recognizing some of these teams from you know having seen them at uh, various MPPL events and things like that. Um, Div Three X Ball. I see um, Denver Chaos is in there. Uh, Pro Edge Paintball Factory is in there. Div 4, we've got some teams that uh, looked awfully familiar. Um, there's a uh, Goonies that uh, that placed in the, looks like the top, they, they've got the top 15 teams. They placed in top 15, um, and, you know, and so on. So this is definitely, you know, a, a format that I think caught on, especially in light of you know seeing seven man the traditional seven man uh, obviously died off some time ago but the format itself the x-ball format definitely caught on and and um you know it, it's pleasant to see that some of these teams are still out there and it looks like they're fielding multiple teams on different levels so it, it's cool but uh, yeah i kind of got a kick out of that i'm seeing some of these teams i remember these guys i remember those guys <laughs> <laughs> well i definitely would like to know why did the seven man format die out when it was going very strong when we last played and now we're seeing mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. five man look i get it five man is easier to actually play it doesn't take as much field to play on a uh, five man field so you can make those fields a lot smaller true the games are a lot quicker because it's a lot less people um and it's only about five minutes you know turn around yeah. on those games are well quick, and so. and they're in line I, you kind of answered your own question, I think, is just because yeah. of the, they, you know, the sport is, has always marketed itself, at least the, the, you know, competitive tournament side has always marketed itself as being very fast and very quick. And, and so from a business standpoint, I think I, I, I get it and that they want to try and, and, you know, get as many matches in as possible, get everybody a chance to play before, you know, changes in weather of the day, you know, if it gets too cold at night or what have you. But um, I, I have to agree. I, I miss seven man. I think seven man was a lot of fun. That was what we cut our teeth on. Mm-hmm. And so it's um, there's a, there's a little, you know, tear shed in, in nostalgia for that one. Yeah. And I'm looking at, I'm looking at uh, giant party sports field. And I would like to say that I would definitely like to go out there and, definitely check it out some of their fields look pretty sick just the fields alone you know the rec ball stuff and like we've said before both me and dennis are not rec ballers per se but they still look like they could be a lot of fun that's it looks like it's a pretty big place but i gotta check this out now so yeah so it looks like oh man yeah yeah (laughs) pretty cool fields huh yeah absolutely holy cow this has given me some this has given me some flashbacks to the early days of SC before it really caught on. Oh yeah. Before it all There's went to nice crap like they have now. Look at that. Yeah. Well, nice. I, I can't speak on that. I can't speak on that. Cause it's been a little while since I've been out to SC, but the last time we were there, they had leaned very heavily into the, the uh, tournament side of things. So the, the, um, the speedball fields and the, the, you know, inflated bunkers and whatnot, were definitely you know more effort was put into them but yeah i'm looking at i'm looking at they've got like you know old rusted out airplanes and car frames and stuff and i'm like man that looks like that seriously brings back some like fond memories right there but now well back to the to the actual event the lone star event so when we looked it up it it was broken down to two different formats you've got your x ball and it was broken down to divisions two to four and then your five man, which is divisions Correct. three to five. So that's how they three, kinda, four, five. Yep. Yeah, that's kind of how they broke it down to say that these are the amateur classes. So 
as long as they're in those brackets, they're, you know, good to play. And I remember back in the day for us, it was like, yep. if we were jumping over to another league, they would check our, to see what other events we've played. And that was the only way that they were able to keep track of yeah. us. Yeah. So I wonder if they're still doing yep. that with the they, NXL. They would pull up. I, yeah. I, I, I'm kind of curious about that too. Now that you mentioned it, um, because I remember having to go online and you actually had to register with a third party registration uh, database that essentially, uh, like you said, it kind of tracked what events you played, what um, divisions you played in and prevented you from, you know, sandbagging or, or, uh, you know, trying to bring ringers in and stuff like that. And um, I'd be real curious to see if they're still operating a system like that in order to try and prevent people from, you know, skirting the, skirting the rules, uh, you know, how they're going to go about that. But then, the other thing, the flip side to it that I found back when we were still playing uh, was if you, I think if you missed a certain number of events or if you weren't registered for a certain amount of time, your status reset. Remember what a lot of teams would do. Is You'd have a guy playing for a couple of events and then have him sit and then he'll reset and then bring him right back in and you've now got your ringer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I remember a lot of teams were doing that. They were purposely, you know, they would have, say, <clears throat> for the seven man format, they would have, say, 14 guys and they would rotate through every season. You know, only certain players would would play in the events and then, you know, everybody would get their stuff reset and then they'd field another team. And these guys would just wreck shop, you know, so. I, I, I again, I'd be real curious to see whether or not they're they've devised a way to to kind of crack down on people doing stuff like that. But it, you know, to each their own. Yeah, yeah. Well, so what? As me and Dennis were doing our little research on this event, uh, we found, of course, if you guys don't know about it, GoSports.com, and they have everything paintball on there, and they have all the leagues. They have. Mm. They have a lot of great stuff. The only downside to it, you got to pay for it. But if you're huge into paintball and especially into the tournament side and you want to see these events because they have all of NXL's events and they stream them live. Yep. And Going all the way it, back to 2015. Yeah. And one of the one of the guys up in the broadcasting booth is Maddie Marshall. Maddie Marshall. Yep. So I really wanted to watch this. But I don't have a subscription. <laughs> so I don't even get to watch this. <laughs> so all we're giving yeah. you guys is what information we can find, which is very minute out there. Because unless you go on to go sports, you can't really see everything that goes on. It kind of sucks. Yeah. But I get it. Yeah. They, Although they, they got to make the dollar. It, Exactly. And and that's that's what I was just going to say, you know, a little little tip of the hat to them for <clears throat> kind of cornering that market because they've been able to prevent people from, you know, streaming things onto YouTube or what have you. So, well, you know, not really. <laughs> I went onto their website or oh. not on their website, but I went on to their Facebook and on their Facebook, they uh -huh. have a video for Sunday, which it's about 40, 48 minutes. They've got Saturday, which is an hour and a half long. And then they have yeah. a live stream that they did. Uh, I, saw, I think I hours. Friday on there as well, right? Uh, I think it's Friday because I, I only see Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, they've got Friday on here. Parts, parts oh, one and two for Friday as well. Yeah. So you can go on to their website or onto their Facebook. And as long as they have them up, you can watch it, which is cool. But of course, mm -hmm. if you want to watch all their mm -hmm. other content, okay. you, know, you definitely got to go and go onto their website and pay for the subscription. But look, again, nothing bad about Go Sports. I have not watched any of their content. I can't really say anything about it. But I definitely, for me, yeah, yeah, and for this podcast, I think I will be getting a subscription just so I can see a lot of their stuff because they do have a lot of information, a lot of great videos. It looks like that I would definitely get into, and it shows you a lot about the players and they have interviews and a lot of great stuff. A lot, a lot of great stuff there. So who knows? Maybe we can get a hold of uh go sports and talk to somebody from there and just, you know, get a little history of them and how they came about 
Oh, that'd be a, into that'd the be people. A... Yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, yeah, it looks like the next event is going to be NXL in uh, the Florida Open. It's a pro. It's going to be a pro event, and it's going to be April thirtieth to May second. So mark your calendars, get your subscription, whatever it's going to be, and get ready for NXL uh, Florida Open. I'm definitely going to be watching that. I mean, well, I'll be in Vegas. Actually, no. <gasps> I won't be in Vegas. I'll be, I'll be home. I'm going to Vegas in oh. April. Oh. So I actually, I'll be home to be able to watch that. Cool. So I'll be sitting back and watching just like nice. you guys out there. <laughs> nice. So, but <laughs> uh, yeah, that's kind of exciting. I mean, seeing a lot of this stuff is starting to get me all tingling inside because it's like man i miss it i really miss it but i'm definitely Dude, I, watching I'm it so i'm so right there with you on that uh, it, just in the in the time that you know we've been trying to get this podcast together and talking and and you know i miss it so much to the point where i'm actually I, I've, I've been having dreams about like matches that we played and, you know, being out there playing paintball and stuff like that. So <laughs> no, I'm right there with you. I just, I think I've got the bug again, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're screwed. We've got the bug. We definitely have. <laughs> <laughs> well, so last episode we had been, t- we were talking, Oh, I'm, I have it on the Facebook, their Facebook page. And I just saw a shot. Of Todd Martinez, as it looks like he's coaching. Oh, uh, yeah. on on the NFL Facebook. On um, no, on actually, it's the Go Sports Facebook. Oh, on Go Sports. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to miss that face and that red hair. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna one of these days. I'm gonna have to to share back. I still have that picture that I took with him at Huntington Beach. <laughs> I still have the picture of me, uh, Maddie, yeah. and Rich. All right. So in, in our last episode, we were talking about how we noticed, uh, because I had just gone out to the field, and we saw the paintball light and also the Splatmasters. And seeing that a lot of yes. fields are starting to field these markers on their fields which are geared more towards ages, I think it was from ages six and up. The Splatmasters are more geared towards... Six and up, yeah. yeah. The Splatmasters, which are... You're correct. uh, If you don't know about them, they were... They're pump-type guns. So think of a Nerf gun, but it's shooting out a small little round jelly ball. And... The fields are starting to use those, and they've been using them for a while. We're just seeing it. That's just because we've been out of the game. And the other thing that I saw was yeah. paintball yeah. light, which is their markers that fire 50 caliber rounds. And if you don't know what a 50 caliber round is, it's probably about, I don't know, I, I want to say the it's size. It's about a third of the size of a regular paintball. So I think I would say like... <laughs> A dime or a little bit bigger than a dime maybe a nickel uh approx- approximately approximately because yeah because a, a paintball uh, a standard six eight paintball diameter is almost that of like not quite a quarter no not that big maybe a nickel yeah and the 50 calibers are about a third the size of a standard paintball. So yeah, that that's a, that's a pretty good analogy. So so we've got the like I said, we got the Splatmasters that a lot more of these fields are starting to field and those are by JT and they're you know, they're getting kids out there. You're talking I I when I went, I saw these freaking little midgets walking around. They had giant heads because of the freaking mask. Hey, 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 little this. people, little people. <laughs> <laughs> I am not politically correct, but they were, no, you know, they, were, okay. they were rocking these uh, little Splatmaster guns and they all, they look like a bunch of shotguns that they were walking around. So we wanted to 
dig a little bit more to find out if there was any more information about them. And it's pretty standard. I mean, it's, it's a 50 caliber round. Um, the splat yeah, monsters the, run the that. markers themselves are, are yeah, the, yeah, the markers themselves are, are actually spring activated, spring actuated, excuse me. Yeah. Um, which was a little bit of a surprise to be honest with you. Um, I, I thought maybe they would have ran off like the 12 gram, uh, similar to like the, the stock class markers or even, even like the, 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 um, you know, 15 cubic, uh, CO2 bottles or something like that. Um, but spring actually spring actuated, which is, um, that's impressive because especially the ones that are the paintball light, um, it still, it still propels them at enough velocity that they'll break. Mm-hmm. But obviously not at the same, uh, you know, not at the same speed. Yeah. But that's, the, you got to admit, that's a pretty strong spring to fire a paintball fast enough to actually break on something. Well, I was watching on a because that's, of course, there's my little shout out to our favorite paintball store, a uh, and <laughs> com. Love you guys. See you guys uh, this week. I will be walking in to buy a bag. Because it's time to give back Dennis his bag because I cleaned it up and he's getting back into the game. So got to turn it over and I got to go get my own bag now. But there you go. On, on ANS, they were showing, uh, if you guys don't know and follow or don't follow them on Instagram. <laughs> um, <clears throat> sorry, I thought about something. But, anyways, uh, if you don't follow them on, on Instagram, Rory usually takes. Uh, whatever marker that they're selling on the site and he'll make a little video testing it out. So you kind of get to see what it does and stuff like that. And the splat masters was one of those that he actually took out and tested. Yeah. And it was, he kind of had to angle it up a little bit to hit about 35 feet away. So it's strong enough and accurate enough to go about 35 feet. So, yeah, hold on. I'm trying to pull that up so I can, so I can be correct. And then on top of that, uh, I looked up the 50 caliber round or the 50 caliber uh, paintball guns, which they don't have. Well, here we go. Let's see if they did a test of the E. So GOG makes a 50 caliber, which those are hard to find right now. Almost impossible. Uh, yeah. Emacs. Yeah, the Etha twos, and I think it was the Emex, can all shoot fifty cal. But it, honestly, I don't think I'd want to have uh, an Etha two that's fifty cal because that thing's four hundred and sixty nine dollars for something that I'm not gonna. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I wouldn't take it out to the field because what you guys got to understand is that it, with with the fifty cal uh, round with the fifty cal balls, you're your marker has to get turned down to about, I think it was 135 to 150 PSI. And I believe it's um, 150. Yeah. Yeah. So if you guys have never shot that low, it like bloop, it just kind of like, it's almost like it rolls out and just kind of lobs over to wherever you're trying to hit. And that was something that I saw one of the videos from again from A and S and they were testing out a fifty cal, and yeah, you could hear the difference. You totally could hear the difference as they're firing. Oh, it's a huge it, difference. Oh yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's a, a it's a it literally sounds like a bloop compared to the pop pop. Is it's you know or with my GS a telling you the the GS Rub it in. is so it's so quiet. Rub it in. <laughs> But it's definitely something that if you guys are dads or moms or whoever's listening to this and you have younger children and you want to get them out there because like my kid, is, she wants to try it out, but I don't want to take her out there because if she gets hit, I don't want to, t- to deter her from wanting to play again because come on, let's all be honest. Right. The first time we played and the first time we got hit, what was your reaction? <laughs> I don't like this game anymore. I'm going home. <laughs> I'm just gonna hide. This is this is only the first game. I'm gonna yeah. just stay right here. I'm not gonna move. I don't want to get hit. Yeah, I'm, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm stay I'm staying all the way in the back. <laughs> And then, and then, of course, getting mad because I can't hit anything. <laughs> I don't see anybody. Where are they at? Well, they're running around. Of course, you're not going to see them if you're sitting in the back. Yeah, exactly. But exactly. You know, it, it's a cool way for the fields to also grab a whole new generation of players without having to wait till they hit ten or eleven. Whenever you decide your kid is old enough to be able to get out there and take the pain of an actual paintball hit. Uh, one of the videos that I watched exactly. was actually, a, exactly. it was an old, it was an old video from Gog and it shows like, you know, I don't want to sound racist, but uppity white people. <laughs> the video is like, <laughs> well, that's not racist. No, it's not. It's not. It's not racist at all. But they, they were like, the mom was out there and like, she looked like she was ready to go play tennis. Kid you not, tennis skirt with, you know, a dry fit shirt. And she literally was ready to go play yeah. tennis. And you see them running around with the, the two kids and the dad and they're shooting. They're having a fun time. They're laughing as they're getting hit. I don't know about you guys. I don't remember the last time that I actually laughed when I got hit. I, I actually was more pissed that I even got hit one and when i get hit it's like oh all right i'm out i'm not walking off laughing about it yeah exactly. but these people were enjoying themselves and the whole the at the end of the video they just talked about how they didn't know that it could be this much fun and they definitely are going to do it again and yeah. right there that field just grabbed four new players and even if they are going yeah, to exactly. come back to play um, I, I paintball just, light. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I actually just shared a video with you. Um, it's a little bit older. It's from PBN, but um, it, it kind of touches on um, the 50 caliber, the, the topic of 50 caliber being better for a younger player or a, as a family event and stuff like that. So uh, depending on video. whether or not we're it able is. to share these. Yeah, do, depending on whether or not we're able to share these with the listeners, um, that might be something for them to to look up as well. Oh yeah, it, this is it's the exact video that you sent me. That's the one that I saw. That's the video. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's it's from it's Gog. That's that was uh, showing off their little. 50 oh, Gog did that one. Okay. Yeah. Which I mean, it's a great video for those okay. of you that are out there that actually want to see what it's like, and you know, you're thinking just like me. I was like, really, this, there's no way that that could be fun, because I mean, I'm shooting a, a gun that sounds like a bloop. <laughs> 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 so, but hey, if you guys are you know interested, do some research. Uh, if you're at the fields, I believe. Um, Actually, all our local fields that are over here, like SE Village, Jungle Sports, uh, ASG, Warped, and Ambush. ASG, I, yeah. I know for sure those all offer uh, paintball light. So it's a way to get your kids out there. Yeah. Age, yep. It starts at age. For the paintball light, it's a little bit older because the Splatmasters, obviously, those are running off like Dennis. Yeah, they're running favorite. off Springs. Paintball light starts at actually at age eight because you are running an actual paintball yeah. marker with actual air connected to it. And the hopper only holds those hoppers. I think they're just standard hoppers, but because they're smaller, they obviously hold a little bit more. Yeah. I, I think they hold like 75 to a hundred rounds, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. So you're still holding quite a few inside of a, a hopper. So it's going to make for a fun time when you're out there. And I, yeah, I think last week I touched on it was that up at the park that Thomas Taylor, I still got to find out if he's running or what he's doing there, but he has a lot to do with it. Uh -huh. They did a young guns event and it was with 50 cal guns. Oh, that would have been, that would have been killer yeah guess who took first place oh god was it uh <laughs> was it excessive no because it's it was it was young guns it was the three man young guns it was for kids infamous field well, no, of, of but, three I man mean, you team. know you know rich if he can you know rich if he can put his name on it he will oh, no no I'm, I'm talking it was thomas thomas is the one that's up at impact 
but it was oh, Thomas's. Was it Thomas's kid then? Yep. <laughs> Infamous ah, kids took first tell me place. That's not rigged. <laughs> tell me that's not rigged. Hey, dude, I watched some of the videos that he posted up of them kids playing, and I got to say, his kids are pretty good, man. His oldest was out there just rocking it. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's in the blood. It's definitely in the blood. I would. I was just going to say that. I mean, shoot, you got, you have one of the best, one of the world's best players as your dad. I mean, that's got to come natural. Oh yeah. I mean, think about it. You got, yeah. The world's best, one of the world's best players aside from Ollie, it's Thomas Taylor. Yeah. So, but again, if you guys are interested, get out there. You know, sign up for it. Do a, a private group where you can I think at SC Village or not SC, but at Jungle Island, it's a it's an eight player group minimum. And it's a two and a half hour slot with a half hour break for the kids. So it, that it's not a bad deal. I think I I want to say it was like a three hundred bucks for the whole thing and they even get paint included. Oh, that's not bad at all. No. That's not bad at all. Um, do they still, do you know if they're still offering the package deal where like they actually will provide lunch for the kids and stuff like that as well? Or is that kind of gone? That's a good question. Let's look that up as we look up that Dennis. Do you that have might say, <laughs> cause that, that to me, that sweetens the pot, you know, if like, you're taking the kids out for, to, you know, they, they get to run around, shoot at their buddies. And then on top of that, you know, pizza is given to them. I mean, that's, that's heaven right there for, uh, you know, most kids. People like package is yep, 310 bucks to our party, 90 minutes on the field, 30 minutes at the picnic tables for a, or for your party time, but nothing about food anymore. Oh, okay. Okay. Even so, you know, four or five hot and readies and, and those kids are in heaven. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially with the, with jungle Island, you've got Costco. That's literally like 10 minutes down the street. So mom and dad can go grab the pizzas, come back and they're, they'll be there ready for them. Uh, if you're at camp Pendleton, yeah, exactly. I wonder if Pendleton offers paintball light they probably do sean's always ahead of the game with that stuff <laughs> does sean even he still always run was it? before yeah but does, is sean still running it oh yeah that's something to look that's something to look into for the next episode if not today yeah because shoot it's been a long time man i was actually just down in pendleton uh this past weekend i had to go shoot real guns business or pleasure <laughs> there was no pleasure in that trust me none whatsoever oh right now because of all the stupidity it is only open to military personnel uh, <clears throat> i can't say i'm entirely surprised but that's a bummer well it just means that somebody like me can still go wow they actually have one he's expanded quite a bit so you've got Camp Pendleton, Miramar, 29 Palms, which I helped to set up the first three. And then you've got Alpine, Quantico, and Yuma. So I'm looking at Alpine and... Huh. It's out in the middle of nowhere, the woods. I mean, it's not a bad place to put a paintball park, but it says it's starting. We are now open for a place starting May 30th. So this place at least is reopening up starting the 30th which is kind of cool but let's see where where what does this place look like that's what i want to know that was something we were talking about earlier how when it comes to paintballers they put up a great website and then they kind of they're at least a front page it looks flashy it's awesome and then all of a sudden you go click on some of the links and it's like where where did it go Where's all dead links yeah. yeah yeah no information uh guys 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 those of you out there that are 
run these some of these sites if you need help just you know hit me up I, i'm doing some graphic <laughs> design i can help with this stuff or at least heed my advice and and for a very and for a very low cost of uh free entry to field or free paint or jerseys or equipment in general or you know paint. just or just throw me like some awesome stuff and i'll, I'll do you know i'll do videos mm-hmm. i'll do uh graphics i'll do stuff <laughs> dang i'm I'm a cheap whore ain't i <laughs> yeah, but you know it is what it is yeah we got to get it wherever we can right oh yeah so so the paintball parks because that's what they call them they're just the paintball parks you've got the paintball park in camp pendleton the paintball park in, in miramar and they offer paintball light Oh, there you go. Yeah. Again, you know, if it is still Sean running this stuff, then of course he's he's ahead of the game. Because when I was working with him and we were getting ready to move over to the new field, we were starting to introduce more um, airsoft. And I used to hate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to hate getting out there and trying to ref airsoft. Because what is there to ref? I can't see when somebody gets hit. Yeah, it, it exactly. It, it falls so much on the honor system for for um, airsofting that it, it's very difficult to police for one. And me personally, the cleanup is not fun. That's not yeah. something I would ever want to look forward to. Yeah, but and I know a lot of players have complained about having to go out onto the field right after an airsoft uh, party came through or, or what have you, you know, because they got no traction, you know, you're trying to kneel or slide on the ground when it's covered in these little pellets and they're just nothing but complaining. Well, I know that over at jungle, they've really divided it up where there's some fields that it is just for the airsoft players because they don't want to get that mixed up. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Which is fine. I mean, I, I personally never had a huge issue with it, but um, it, it can lead to a lot of, I don't want to say conflict, but it, it definitely scheduling conflict because, you know, you don't want one side to feel left out and you don't want, you know, people to feel like they're having to, uh, you know, compete with a whole other group just to get time out on the field. So it's smart for them to separate it off like that. But at the same time, to me, it seems like a huge headache. I think think that's just us getting old (laughs) and we're just complaining about everything. That too. (laughs) Yeah, that too. That too. Uh... I mean, I, I know I'm very good at complaining. Eugene has, has had to muzzle me a couple of times back in the day. So Oh, yeah. Ah, the good old days. We were just talking about the good old days uh, just yesterday when I was actually seeing if Dennis was going to be available today. And I was commenting on and again, complaining about the prices of some of these gear bags. (laughs) Holy crap. (laughs) Now, tell me, do these gear bags, when I open it up, pop up into a full-on tent where I can dress inside of, take a nap, and then close it back up, hold on my gear, and then just put it in my car? Because for the prices that they're asking for, it better do something. Well, if nothing else, it should be giving you a happy ending. (laughs) Something, man. Just something. Because, shoot, my first gear bag that I bought was at Orange County and PPL. It was a black, gray, and red Empire bag. And I think I spent like 120 and it was a roller bag. And this thing was huge. Like I could literally fit a small body yeah. inside of it. Yeah. In fact, I think we did shove, what was that kid's name? That young kid Oh. that played with us a few times. Oh, what was his name? He was a good kid. He was just kind of. I can swear we shoved him in a bag, though. We did. We put him in a bag just to see, and his parents freaked out because, at the time, we didn't know he had a heart condition. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. Was it Adam? 
Was his name Adam? I, I want to say it was Adam. Adam. That was his name. Yes. Adam, Adam and his last name was because he was half Asian and half white. And it, the last name was like. No, I thought team. he was. I thought he was half Asian and half Mexican. Was he? No, I think he was white. I, I know. I I know. I met his dad, and his dad was definitely Asian. So yeah, his dad. His dad's Japanese. Okay, so his dad was Japanese. So yeah, I don't. I can't remember his last name. I mean, like I said, he was a cool kid, but he had to get talked to a couple times and had to be like, "Hey, dude, you gotta chill." Yeah. But he was. He still was a good kid. He yeah. Was a good kid. So. Yeah, we did put him in a bag. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Uh, but seriously, dude, tell me, why does one of those bags, exact same size, with pouches and everything, now cost $300? Well, I mean, it, it's not not to go too tangential, but um, it's the same with everything right now. The cost of living has gone up, so you know manufacturers are are demanding an increase in the their product, which in turn trickles down to the middleman having to charge more in order for them to turn a profit. It's, it's it, we see it in we see it in my field as well in the veterinary field. Our suppliers, you know, we buy medications for a certain amount of dollars, and every six months or so they'll jack the price up and. So we in turn have to jack up our prices and it doesn't make our clients happy, but you know, again, that's, that's economics for you. It's uh, supply and demand. Yeah, I know, but I just want to complain about it. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. I don't blame you one bit. Here's the other thing that, that for me, it hurts because, you know, we're not, in our mid twenties anymore. We're not as carefree as we used to be. You know, I mean, we're both parents. We're, we both have, you know, careers and we've got responsibilities that just were not, excuse me, not there when, uh, when we were younger. And so and now it's gotten really to the point suck. where I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and the, the, the thing for me is it's like, I sit there and I go, yeah, I could afford to buy it, but can I justify it? <laughs> True, true. And that's what that's why I've held back on so much stuff that I want to get and so many like I went to the I went to Target yesterday and I made the mistake of going to the back where all the like the pop figures and all where all the toys are. Okay. More more like mm -hmm. collector toys, not like toy toys, but where the collectibles are, yes. Yeah. Yes. I made the mistake of going back there because as I'm yeah. walking back, it was uh, they made it into this big giant wall on the back, so now you could see it all the way down the aisle. It's like, <gasps> ooh! So I went over there, and I bought a 35th anniversary Ultimate uh, Tales of Science Fiction Marty McFly, just a doll. Yes, a doll. The ones where you can remove the heads and change his facial expressions, all the parts that go along with it. He's in the orange, or not the orange, but yellow uh, radiation suit. I spent 30 The bucks radiation on that. suit, yeah. Yeah. 30 bucks. <laughs> so tell me, how, how do I justify that? It, well, it, I mean, it, I'd be lying if I said I didn't have similar purchases. You know, there, there have been times where I was wandering around and I said, oh, I think I need a new one of those. And then somehow I find <laughs> a, you know, a new Xbox controller in the cart or, <laughs> you know, a, a, a Star Wars, a Star Wars, you know, Black Series. Uh, oh, those ones get me all the time. You know, uh, what, what is he called? The the mountain trooper that like, you know, has never, he never actually showed up in the movie, but you know, of course they have to make variations of all the different things. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I, am not immune to that either. Yeah. I'm not well, immune. So I'm looking, looking at ANS right now and we've got, cause I, like I said before, I'm kind of digging on, on HK stuff. I mean, they, they put on, put out a quality product. So, why would I steer away from them? I feel like if I got something that said die on it, 
mm-hmm. like I'm showing my age, so I'm trying to keep up with these kids. So the ANS bag that I'm looking at, I would love, love to get the expand rolling gear bag. But when I look at the price, I kind of shudder away. It's $229. Okay, I got to see that. Oh! Yeah. Wow. Now, for those of you out there that want to get them, go for it. I'm not going to deter you guys from getting those whatsoever. I would never talk, again, not talking bad about anybody. It's just, I'm looking at the prices. I'm like, holy crap. But the bag that I really want from them, like, would love to be able to get is the push gear bag. I don't know if you, if you've seen those push is another company that puts seriously quality gear, but they're rolling gear bag to 99. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. So I'm going to settle for, uh, I'm not settling because I actually went into, when I was in the shop last, I kind of actually got my hands on one of uh, HK's bags and I'm going to go for their, um, what is it called? Where's, where are you at? My internet's a little slow right now. Is it the, the expand, the expand backpack gear bag? Um. Yeah, it's the Expand Backpack Gear Bag. Yeah. Now I just got to decide which one I want. Oh, you have to get the Skull and Crossbones. I was looking at that. I really was, but I kind of, I'm kind of digging on the fire. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong there. So, and, you know, for those of you guys that obviously can't see what we're looking at, uh, go ahead and you should go on ANS gear, check it out. These bags are pretty sick. And I actually got my hands on it. I got to feel it, got to look at it, open it up. It expands out so you can put your goggles in there. It's got slots for your your markers to go in. Your, you know, it's got everything. Everything you would need in that bag, it's got it. And it's a decent size for it. And the price isn't bad. So I definitely digging on that fire uh definitely check it out so you know i'll be rolling with a new bag soon nice yeah and the nice thing about it too is that it does it's got that expandable option Mm -hmm. so we got any stories from the old days can we think of something right now as we're uh oh man (laughs) you're you're asking me to you're asking me to like dig in and and talk about some of the stuff that that we've gone through it's like holy cow um well i mean so bakersfield say, is the first thing that comes to oh mind my gosh bakersfield bakersfield in the the room with you me Moffy, and kaylin all four of us in we shared beds <laughs> we said we, let's sleep let's sleep head to toe or yeah toe to head but you know when you do that the naughty bits still could touch there's no getting around that all you're doing is just flipping so your head so your faces (laughs) don't (laughs) meet up (laughs) it doesn't make any sense whoever made up that rule is a freaking idiot because come on yeah exactly oh man but no so jesus say I'm a new paintballer, or actually I'm, I've been playing and I want to move into more of the tournament side of things. Where do mm-hmm. I start? What do I do? You know, what advice do you have? Seeing that we're two old guys that have done it for a while and have, geez, dealt yeah. with both um, sides. You know, you know, to be honest with you, um, I had a very kind of a, a, a you know, thrown in the deep end kind of an experience initially um you know i mean when i first the very first time i ever stepped on a field um somebody handed me uh most most of the people who listen to this may not even catch the reference but um i i used an auto mag and uh, (laughs) if anybody 
Yeah, if anybody's ever used a if anybody's ever used a pneumatic nail gun, that's pretty much what an automag is. Um, <laughs> but it was very much at the time it was that and the uh, the autococker were the mm-hmm. they ruled the roost in terms of um, you know the top of the top of the line in terms of, of paintball markers and things like that. And so for me kind of experiencing what was the best at the time um it made it a lot more fun but it also made it very daunting because you you look at this thing like the, the automatic especially um it had like pneumatic hoses going around the outside of the body and and i mean it was heavy you know comparing the the markers even from when you know when we last played uh, comparing the weight of the markers today to what they used to be, it's so different. And I mean, you felt it when you were carrying these things around. Um, so for a new player, I think what I would do is I would actually recommend them going, you know, maybe mid grade. Don't go full on buy the best stuff out there because for one, it's going to take some time for you to, you know, get used to the sport Two, you have no idea how to fix these things. And <laughs> if you are, you know, in the middle of a game and you suddenly, you know, start dropping pressure, you've got a leak somewhere, you're, you know, blowing paint out this, the ports in your barrel and you don't know how to fix it. You don't know how to work on it. Uh, you're pretty much done for the day. And that that can really kind of kill the mood for a lot of people. So I would say go simple, Um, you know, look at something either entry level or or mid level um, and just get a taste for it, get a feel for it and do it with friends because, you know, even though it's not intentional, you are going to play against people who know what they're doing who've been playing this sport for a long time who are are much more skilled at it and that can be a big deterrent as well so i i think that would be my biggest advice would just be to um to go in you know open-minded and do it with friends advice that i would give is kind of the same thing would be kind of yeah take your time i played for god i think i was i played for almost 96 till we started playing so i was already in for a while almost 10 years if not you know almost yeah almost 10 years i had been playing almost 10 years before i finally learned about uh tournament playing but once i got a taste of it that was it i was gone i traded out my cocker because that was my second marker that i had and i got myself uh I think it was the E-Tech. They had just come out with the E-Techs. And no, no, I'm wrong. It was the first generation of the Ions. Remember those things? Yeah. No, I thought, why was I thinking you were running a Timmy when you first, when we first met? No, I wasn't running a Timmy. I was running, I had an Ion and then I upgraded it because they had put out that board and it still sucked. So I ended up going and getting a, an e-tech just before we went out to um orange county it was the first e-techs and i went and bought oh, those okay okay and uh yeah that's what i ran with and man though that that just makes me that just makes me think back on those um that the early the ego platform in general but the egos were so like I mean, that was the hot gun for the longest time, and I remember when the Etex first hit, everybody was like, "It's basically an ego at like you know a quarter of the price, and it doesn't have like the the OLED board like the like the you know the standard, but it already almost the day of that that uh, they hit the market, there were already aftermarket." Um, upgrades available for it you could buy uh you could buy boards for them you could get you know the the upgraded uh, feed necks and the eye cover 
Mm -hmm. all these all these things and you're still not paying as much as you could for a uh you know a a base model ego man i i just that's the other thing that that for me has been one of the glaring changes in the sport itself is that marker technology has come so far but then they've rolled back the price point to you know to a level where it's a lot easier for people to get into the competitive side of the sport um the markers that you and i are picking up right now you know the the mini gs and and um and the empire x mm-hmm. both of those markers are you know sub they're sub five hundred dollars and they're you know their tournament level markers i mean they they can hang just as well as you know the the geos and the the um lv1s and and some of these other super high-end markers now granted are they going to be you know top notch maybe not but you're not going to find yourself lacking uh you know incredibly so and I think that's uh, that blows me away because it used to be such a huge gap between affordability and performance. Yeah, definitely. Um, that was the one thing that I that I did notice that because you had an ego at the time when I came in, and I was still able to keep up with you. Yeah, as long as, as yeah, well, I, I had, had my e tech. Yeah, I had the granted. Granted, the e tech was yeah. obviously a little bit louder, a little bit heavier, but it still kept up. There was nothing that I couldn't do that the other players who had the twelve, fifteen hundred dollar guns, you know, they were doing. I was doing the same thing. So yeah, well, and I mean, it got to the point for me. I I I still had my I still had my base model ego, and then I had an E Tech as well. Oh no, I had the E Tech too. Because I had the second generation that came out when I got mine, but I ended up playing with the E Tech more than I did my my Ego because I I just found it was a better marker, which is funny to say, but you know, and it didn't have half of the upgrades that I had put into my Ego. I had a uh, I had a Virtue Board in my Ego. I had you know all the like aftermarket uh, hard parts for it, and and you know I had the that that lucky one which i don't know if that company's even around anymore but that lucky one barrel that everybody loved um yeah i just like it but i ended up using the e-tech over my ego because it for me was just a better gun so yeah it's and and, and that was something that even though eugene and i played uh, different positions i i generally played back corner and and uh, eugene was a mid but um you know, there, I never, I, I never had to worry about, you know, uh, him not being able to lock down a lane because his gun couldn't keep up with the rate of fire. So, well, I think it was also that there was more that can go wrong with that, with the actual ego compared to the e tech because it was more, it was much more simplified. So they were able to sell it at a lower price rate. That's whereas, true. Whereas That's very now, true. Um, the GS is the GS has a little bit more, even though it's at a low price point. And that's uh, again, that's kind of you know blows me away just how just how much um, like I say that the market technology itself has moved forward, but they've rolled the price point back to it's it's so much more accessible, uh, especially for people like us who. You know, I mean, we've got nine to fives and we've got kids. And so there are a lot of other things that may prevent us from being able to go on a regular, ba- excuse me, on a regular basis or being able to, you know, travel a long distance just to go play. Um, it, it, we don't feel like we're wasting our time and money. No, definitely not. I mean, I'm very happy with my purchases with the markers that I have. So again what we're saying is for those of you that are brand new to the sport those of you that are excited to play you know and you want to take it up to the next notch don't as much as we even we drool over some of these you know newer markers the free the luxes the you know the higher end egos or eat um 
you know, the eclipses, the higher end, you know, empire guns, all these higher end gun, guns, they're all great. I, I will never, I'm not knocking any of them. It's just the price point that I, that hurts me. And I may get one sooner or later, but as of right now, I'm happy with my GS. And if you guys are getting started, yeah. hey, don't jump that high. Don't think that because you don't have that $1,500 marker that you won't be able to complete compete against other people. Pick up the GSs. Yeah, exactly. You know, pick up the the axes. You know, those markers will hold up. Definitely do that. And you still could upgrade them. You know, I, I personally probably wouldn't upgrade it, you know, because the parts are what I, I trust the company. You know, they, they put pro, uh, quality products yeah, exactly. out. So I, I feel like sometimes I don't need to do these upgrades that other people are like, oh my gosh, I got the new board in and it makes it even faster. It's like, but there's a cap at tournaments. <laughs> you yeah, can't exactly. go over so, and, and, you know, it can't be so that, fast. Exactly. And that, and I was actually going to touch on that very same point in that, um, you know, when we first left the tournament scene, um, as long as, at least in, in seven man and PPL, um, as long as your gun was truly semi-auto one trigger pull for one ball, um, there was no cap on the rate of fire. If you could roll that trigger fast enough, you could get it up to, you know, 15, 20 balls per second. It, it, good on you. You know, I mean, you, you were putting in the work, you know, grinding out, finger stretching, whatever. Um, but uh, with, with the advent of X ball and, and, and XL and, and um, you know, the, the five man format starting to become more prevalent, they had a, they had the, uh, the ramping that was like, I think it was capped at 13 or something like that, which again, that it, it leveled the playing field. So therefore you didn't have to worry about people using, you know, cheat modes or, or anything like that, um, that you so you could sometimes run into because uh, the, a lot of these boards were programmable and now it's tenant. It's everything is capped at 10.5, which for a lot of us, even back then, that was slower than we could roll the trigger in semi. So, <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, you don't have to worry about going and buying all these upgrades to, to make the performance of the, at least on the electronic side of the marker better. Um, you could, uh, you know, of course, if they sell upgradable, you know, internals, you know, the pneumatics or, or, you know, maybe a different type of bolt or something like that, that you, if you want to go for it. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, Eugene, you're, you're absolutely right in that, um, it, it, upgrading the markers are not as necessary anymore. And again, that just makes it that much more accessible to the, to the average person who maybe can't, you know, dive in like that. So definitely, it makes it, uh, it, it, it makes it much easier to swallow. That's for sure. Oh yeah. So we're coming up on our time, which it never feels like we've gone as long as we have. It doesn't. It, it's really funny, actually. I, I wasn't even going to say anything, but I kind of had an eye on the clock as well. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. It feels like we barely touched on anything. Yeah, it, it does. It feels like we didn't really talk about much of anything, but we got a lot in in that hour time, which is great. And uh, yeah, so I mean, to kind of recap it, check out Go Sports for all your paintball needs as far as tournaments and standings and information on players we're don't don't go away from us because <laughs> we're going to bring you guys that same stuff but obviously it's <laughs> going to be more audio and you know soon we'll probably get uh we'll be able to do some video stuff together um i'm actually working on designing redesigning the logo that we have which i've not going too far from what the old logo was. So soon you'll be able to see our logo. Hopefully I can get some stickers made because that's what I do um, on the side here at home. I do stickers and a couple other things. So we'll see what kind of BTM swag. Do people still use that word? I uh, think so. I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, that just dated us. It, it, it could, it could. It, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Although, although I will admit, I, I, I am eyeballing that jersey in the background, so I, I like might have to try and cop that off of you. 
for those of oh, you listening, me. for those of you listening, Eugene is wearing uh, one of the older behind the mask uh, jerseys that were designed when uh, when behind the mask was initially launched back in what was that the early two thousands? No, uh, two thousand seven. Yeah, two thousand seven. Yeah, um, and it's got uh, it, it's got our. It's got our slogan and uh, the logo and everything like that. And I mean, it's fire. It's fire, <laughs> especially for those of you who like to collect what would be considered, a, you know, a uh, a a older jersey, rare. retro, rare this jersey. Is, yeah, this one and this one, the one that I'm actually wearing, I'm looking at it now. This is actually one that I did wear on the field because I could still see where I've been hit. <laughs> <laughs> and you know when i was out there on the field dude i was getting wrecked i would get wrecked just so i can get the perfect shot of players diving into the snake or you know posting up somewhere but i would get just slammed because people were just throwing paint you know obviously and this one uh the back was riddled with yeah it's th so this one that i'm wearing is actually my original uh btm jersey so who knows maybe if we get big enough and people actually want to see these i might raffle off one of the og worn by eugene himself uh, hey paintball uh, btm jerseys and i still actually have my uh i think i still have it somewhere but i have my keebler jersey with my name on the back I wish I still had mine. I'm not sure what happened to them, but I did have somebody actually hit me up via DM. Oh gosh, this was maybe maybe five six years ago. Um, they they offered me a substantial amount of money for my Keebler really? jersey. And I really? Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they they were very upfront about it and were like, you know, I I collect paintball jerseys. I saw you guys all over the place and. I really want one. Do you still have yours? And I, unfortunately I don't, I'm not sure what wow. happened to it over the years, but, uh, but yeah, um, let's just say I probably could have, I probably could have bought a new, I probably could have bought a new tank with the amount of money that he <laughs> offered me for that nice. Jersey. <laughs> wow. That's a good amount of money. Yeah. Huh? Well, I'm definitely, uh, We'll definitely have some stickers up. Uh, I'm going to try to put together an Instagram to start putting up, you know, just posting stuff whenever we we can and also posting when we're going to be uh, having a new episode come up. And who knows, you know, we're trying to get all our old connections, see what we can do, see what we could bring to this little podcast of ours. Yeah. You know, down the line, hopefully we, we could get some more stuff and, and try to raffle it off to people and, you know, just have some fun with it. So we definitely want to do that. Uh, like I've said in the first episode and I've said in my older episodes, uh, or at least my old podcast that I was, I'm still doing, but not really doing. It's been a little bit, but go visit your local fields, you know, give them your money. Go visit your local uh, shops. Uh, let's get this sport growing again. Um, stimulate the economy. Yes, definitely stimulate the economy. You guys are all getting those stimulus checks. And if you're not, well, then you might be a kid and you don't get it. Your parents do. But <laughs> hit them up. Tell them, hey, I know you got $1,400 for me. I want to see the money. Right. Show me. Oh, man, I'm about to go really old right now. <laughs> <laughs> Got to throw on some Jerry Maguire in there. Oh my gosh! Some some Cuba, some Cuba Junior, Cuba Cuba Gooding. But definitely, guys, get out there. I keep talking them up. Who knows if they'll ever hear about it, or if I might just walk in the store and say, "Hey, by the way, we got a podcast I'm talking about you guys a lot." But ansgear.com, check them out. Love their stuff. Their guys yeah, are very got, on top of things. Um, yeah, they've, they've got a great selection of markers, packages. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can you can get yourself hooked up with a really good gun, tank, loader, mask, all included for a really great price. And then still hit up your local uh, stores for stuff like paint and smaller things that you want to get right away. Yep. So get out there, get playing. 
play every weekend. Get out there, play, you know, think of us when you're playing, you know, we'll be there in spirit. That's right. And then who knows, maybe one day you'll actually see us there. Yeah. Look out there. Mm -hmm. You may be at jungle Island or SC village or some of the other ones that are over here in SoCal. Uh, you might just see us run around with these red and yellow jerseys that say BTM. And, you know, if you do see us, hit us up, say what's up. If you got a team, definitely hit us up. We would yeah. love to interview guys, interview you guys, find out who you guys are, what you guys are doing, what you guys are about. Absolutely. You know, promote you guys, get you guys Absolutely. out there, make you guys out, out to be a bigger team than you really are. Yeah. I mean, especially, especially once we got our social media up and running, you know, we'll be happy to, you know, if you want to snap pictures with us, we'll be glad to tag you and, and, you know, get the hashtags and and things like that. So absolutely. You know, we're, we're, our, our big thing is, um, you know, growing the sport, exposing more and more people to the sport and um, not to sound too corny, but help you guys uh, make it to Sunday. (laughs) <laughs> oh damn <laughs> i did it uh, i went there <laughs> make it to sunday we just want to make you the little guys feel like you're a hundred times bigger than than you are yeah you know that's that's the biggest thing is making you guys feel like rock stars i've always loved doing that always love meeting the new players and uh at different tournaments and then seeing them at the local fields or seeing them at the next tournament and being able to just talk with them, see how they've been doing, where they've been. We've had quite a few teams that we actually started following and to the point where we got to know even the families and we're seeing the moms and dads at each tournament. They're coming, hanging out, talking to us. It's yep. great. It's a family thing. That's what it felt like back when I was playing. It yep. felt like a oh, ginormous family, you know, which was always cool and that's what sunday clothing back then was about that's what btm was about back then was a family thing you know all you paintballers if you guys back then if you are listening to us now and remember who we were you guys were like family to us because we saw you guys that much so it was awesome and that's what we want to do again so with that being said to all my family out there uh It's been great. It's been awesome. Of course, always, as always, to talk to you, Dennis, and yep. talk about our Damn. favorite thing. So with that, I, again, I'm Eugene, my co host I'm Dennis. And this, again, has been another episode of Behind the Mask. Behind the Mask.